clumpy, crusty, and charred. Precious Lube looks long past useful. Surprising scarring stuns users. A1's wear rate worrisome. And from solid start to sloppy structure, this Creality can't keep it consistent. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 212. Let's get into it. Starting off here with a Persia Core, one that was converted from a Mark IVs, so could have a little bit age to it, but I'm looking at a picture that to me would really belong in the just rolled into the shop subreddit where uh, mechanics post the worst of their findings. It looks like that you haven't changed the oil in your car in an undefined number of years. We've got tons of gunk and buildup inside of this next router. Well, Next router. And this is the planetary gear set that Prusha ended up going with from the cycloidal gear set, which I still think would have been a lot cooler, but I recognize is more difficult. So fine. Leave a like if you prefer the cycloidal because it's just cooler. The planetary gear set is obviously quite a bit easier to manufacture, but <laughs> call me Sir Mix a lot because unfortunately there are some big butts with it and I like big butts and I cannot lie. Generally speaking, I cannot lie when it comes to fixing 3D printers, and one of them is the grease. grease is the, word. the grease goes through lots of wear when you're dealing with systems like this. And I do not believe that that level of wear is reasonable for a machine like this, especially, you know, let's say it's got a couple thousand hours on it. I would not expect it to look this bad. It's a relatively easy process, but I wish we could get a better understanding of why. In my traditional understanding, and when we've built Mark IVs, Mark IVs, and Core 1s, the grease isn't black. I don't know if they use molybdenum disulfide or a molly grease, or if just over time it's collected some schmoo to, uh, well, grind into the gears and become a problem. You know what really grinds my gears? Shmoo. There is a unique kind of weird issue with the core one and that you can get bits of filament that end up inside of the planetary gear set. And that's with any Prusa next router, to be honest. And so it could be crushing that up, turning it into this goo that we see. In my opinion, I would be taking this thing off, completely stripping it clean and then rebuilding it step by step by step. <laughs> Now, the nice thing is, since you did upgrade it, clearly have done this before, but Prusa has full assembly guides, and if you wanted to disassemble it, just do it in reverse. And it makes for servicing this quite easy. However, I don't know if the Nextruder gear sets are something that we should be checking often. I know I certainly never have, and I'm not certain if I'm supposed to, but it hasn't made any bad noises. So, <laughs> maybe I should, but I don't. So, do you have a Nextruder or any Prusa printer with a Nextruder on it? I'd love to know, have you ever taken the front cover off? Because I never have, and it's never been something that's ever worried me. I understand that over time, grease can pick up dust, dirt, debris, and things like that. That can get it this kind of ugly black color. And if you wanted to fully clean this, you're going to, you know, very carefully take it apart, use a toothbrush, and clean it all out but ultimately not a very difficult thing to take care of just please make sure it is off of the machine before you start cleaning this is probably still fine and would probably still operate with minimal complaints the next router is not really a very high torque system and we don't generally find it to be under a fair bit of damage or wear if it ain't broke don't fix it but if you are feeling like giving your machine a complete overhaul, this is a great place to start. I would also recommend cleaning out the filament door that we see here. There's a little bit of schmoo in there. And while some of you might think I'm a little bit greasy, and certainly my skin makes enough oil that it should probably be invaded by the United States at this point, my name is Grant. This is 3D Musketeers and Print Fix Friday, where we help you get your printers back to printing with purpose. And, you know, whether they've got a little bit of the black goo oozing out where they shouldn't, or maybe they're just not printing like they used to. You can reach out to us on all the social medias. Links, of course, in that description. Or you can film a video on YouTube and tag us in the description. We get notified of those. We can show it off on a future episode. 
and help you get your printer running right. But from the ugly goo monster to DJ friggin' Khaled with another one. Another one. There have been eight more Bamboo A1 fires since we last talked about it. So I want to remind you guys that if you do have a Bamboo A1 that has been bought from what we can tell around November of 24 through present day, please be careful. Do not leave them running unattended. Although you should never leave a 3D printer running unattended. We all do it. Okay. Just please with the A1s. Everyone has gotten very lucky so far. A larger issue has not occurred. And, uh, well, unfortunately, I believe it might be only a matter of time. And what's very interesting to me is the ways that people look at these issues. We recently put out a short, and boy, howdy, did the bootlickers come out strong. Like, look, don't get me wrong. If you, you like what you like, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think we can all collectively agree that got too hot, and it burned we can collectively agree that we can collectively agree that that is also a fire hazard sure it hasn't resulted in any major damage yet the machine is dead he ain't fixing that not without brand new pieces but i really don't want to see this happen to more people we've gotten lucky so far that these issues haven't spread beyond the machines but a perfect storm can happen so please 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 don't prove if you or someone you know has a Bamboo Lab A1 or P1S, because we're seeing it on the P1Ss as well, but is way more prevalent on the A1 that has had this issue with the NTC thermistor, please reach out to us. We will cover all shipping costs to get the boards in. We are collecting a fair few of them. We're going to send them off and have them professionally analyzed. And in fact, we have ones already in hand which is awesome. It means we have some sort of evidence. We want to be able to present the facts to you guys and see what we can do to help solve this problem so it never happens again. We understand that problems happen, but we can't deny the fact that this is a much more serious issue than many of the uh, super duper fanboys are making it out to be. And this isn't about one brand versus another. It's about consumer safety. If this was happening to Perusha's, we'd be talking about it too. The same way that as of today, we are also collecting broken cables from the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. Since posting the video from Willow Creative, which we'll card to so you guys can take a look at that whole episode, we found out that her incident with the Centauri Carbon is not unique. And in fact, there's quite a few other users that have this issue as well. So if you have a Centauri Carbon that is going through these issues where the main cable that runs power to the tool head is starting to spark, arc, or just not work properly, let us know. We would like to get those broken cables in so we can, once again, have them tested at our expense at a professional facility to determine why the issue is occurring. In both of these cases, we have decent assumptions as to why they're occurring, but I'd rather leave it up to the experts rather than some random guy on the internet. And are there other machines that you've seen surprising issues on? If we do start to see patterns of failures over and over from certain brands and certain machines, we will open that up as well. It's not just Bamboo. It's not just Elegoo. We're just doing this for safety. We have another A1 issue here. This one, a little bit different. We can see on the right side of the machine a huge buildup of what looks like either soot, dust, grease, something. And whatever that something is, it appears to be attracted statically to the printer itself. This is an A1. It appears to be inside of an enclosure. And according to quite a few of the commenters in here, there's not enough clearance on the back of that A1, which could be putting some stress on the machine itself, which absolutely could be resulting in incredibly fast wear on the moving parts. I'm not certain how easy it is to service an A1. But it does look like the rails could viably come off with a couple of bolts. It should be possible to fix. That is assuming it is a bearing issue. This to me does look like a bearing is getting very hot. That grease is turning more into dust and it is getting attracted to the actual printer itself. If it just wipes up, doesn't have a foul smell of burning, then you're probably okay. But for having a printer just over a week, 
putting it inside of an enclosure and not knowing if you have enough space around the machine is a little bit dangerous and could create a fire hazard. Remember, we already have fire hazard issues with the A1. We just showed you another one. Don't put these printers in an instance where it's just asking for trouble. Please, please don't do that. But I would certainly say that this is not indicative of any amount of use in one week. So if you've seen this on A1s, I'd like to know your thoughts about it down below. Because to me, this just looks like a bearing that's prematurely wearing. And if you're smashing the bed back up against the enclosure, sure, that's totally possible. But I do have a feeling that the enclosure itself is a little bit too small for the machine. Remember, if you are going to get enclosure for your 3D printer to make sure that it is adequately sized, that when you move the bed, if it is a bed slinger, all the way back and all the way forward, it does not contact anywhere on the enclosure. And that includes from the cables for the heat bed. You don't want those getting any extra friction than what's minimally necessary because that will create excess wear. And well, again, could create an instance of a fire hazard. The nice thing is that Bamboo does have a support system. We've seen their support ticket times can vary quite a bit, but you've had the machine for a week. It's time to just open a support ticket and see what support says. If they want you to clean up the machine, take it out of the enclosure, listen to them, see if that works. And if they want to give you new parts, then you get the new parts and you install them. We can see that a user here said it is likely a bad bed roller bearing. And they said to wiggle the bed and look where the roller meets the track. You'll see what I mean. The bearing is trash. I had this happen on a 70 hour old machine. Bearings can fail. That's a totally normal thing. It's just part of the deal. And if they're not properly lubricated, they fail very quickly. But I do think that the excess wear that we see from this bearing is potentially caused by the excess pressure of the bed hitting that back wall. Let me know what you guys think in those comments down below. Last up, we got a Creality K1 running Sunlu PLA Plus at 220, which they're told is too hot. 220 is fine. They want to get their settings dialed in and have clean prints. They've had good luck with other items, but this one in particular has had some issues. Let's take a look here. We've got a part that outside of a little bit that is sticking out there and down at the bottom should be able to sit perfectly flat on the build plate. When we look at a piece like this, you're using organic or tree supports. That is not the right support style to be using for parts like this. When you have a huge, relatively flat surface that needs to be supported, the organic supports are not normally the right ones to choose. We would recommend something like snug supports or just the regular grid supports. However, if it is possible, just cut the model in half, print the two halves facing down, then glue them together. It should pretty much remove most of the support needs on this part. There might be a bridge or two here or there that needs a little bit of support, but you're not going to need to support a ton on this. That will significantly clean up the print to begin with. But we can also see what appears to be the infill poking through the part. This could be something else, but... What is cluing me into the infill is we have a line here and then it transitions over here. This is indicative of how we see either cubic, adaptive cubic, triangle, and some of the other styles of infill where they can shift a little bit. It's totally normal. But if your infill overlap percentage is really above like 25%, really you generally want to be below 20. You have a high probability of actually seeing the infill on the outside of the part. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do at this point, but looking at the underside of the part, you're gonna be doing some sanding anyways. So get out that palm sander, that DA, whatever it is that you might have, give it the old Mr. Miyagi with some sandpaper and clean it up. You might be wondering, but Grant, I really just want it to run better what can I do? My recommendation, check that infill overlap percentage. Make sure it's 15 to 20%. Do not go above 25. You will start to see it. If that is fine, then we got to look at our belt tension. And we have to look to make sure that one of the belts is not obtusely loose and could be causing some extra vibration. If the machine has been moved recently, make sure to rerun that input shaper calibration because the surface that it is on might be vibrating and resonating at a different frequency, causing the lines that we see. I still believe that it is infill related, but it's always a good thing if you have moved your machine recently, just go ahead and rerun the input shaper. It takes like 10 minutes and it's a good idiot check. But again, I think cut this part in half. 
or minimally, if you can, extend this line to this edge. Same with this, although these look like they're potentially at the same. Cut it so that all of this is nice and flat. You can support this area if you'd like, but I think if you just cut it right down the center, okay, down the center line, you'll have significantly less areas to support, a little bit of glue, or our preferred gloop. It is a chemical solvent for 3D prints, and it comes in a wide variety of, uh, well, fun mixtures, this one being the PLA variety. We love Gloop here. It is a staple of customer parts that require multi-piece because once that Gloop kicks, you are not getting it apart. Seriously, we've tried. We've played tug of war against Gloop's robot, Jeff, and every single time, Florida Man has lost. And now I haven't been pumping iron or anything, but uh, your boy did some pretty good numbers. And if you want to see me fight Jeff to the death, or well, more so testing the power of Gloop, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed because, well, coverage from 3D Printopia 2025 is coming very, very soon. But how would you deal with a part like this? Certainly outside of cutting it, there's really no good edge to put this part. If you can always put parts on the largest flat surface possible. But if you can't, sometimes cutting it is the best way to do it. In my opinion, a seam going down the middle that is chemically welded together so it never comes apart is a lot easier to deal with than the underside of the part not looking all that nice. If you do want to try to clean this up some, you will have to dial in the distance between your support material and the layer that goes on top of it. You will also have to dial in your cooling, your speeds, and your feeds for your machine. It can take a very long time to dial in support so they just break away. And yes, temperature can have a big impact on this as well. But 220 for a PLA plus, well within the range. And quite frankly, we tend to run PLA when we need to run it fast, even hotter than 220. Ultimately, what a manufacturer recommends on the spool is not always going to work for you. Remember, each printer is different. Each printer's flow rate is different. And if you're going to run the machine up toward the top end of its flow rate, you're going to have to give it more heat to get past the fact that the hot end can't simply flow more material. You just overheat it. It's a barbaric way of handling it, but it works in a pinch. What also works in a pinch are the awesome names listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to get your names listed in lights, you can do so by clicking the link down in that description and joining for as little as $1 a month on PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel members. And at the $10 tier and higher, you get to come hang out in our private Discord server where you will get to see some really interesting behind the scenes stuff for some upcoming trips that we have that, uh, well, maybe it's public by now. Maybe it's not. Who knows? You have to follow us on social media to find out. That is all we have for you all today. Don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one.